Well, folks, we have some really interesting news to share in the hydrogen space. Now, you guys know that I believe there is a very important opportunity for hydrogen fuel cells to help revolutionize the decarbonization race. There's obviously a big push for electric vehicles. And right now, hydrogen is really the only option we have for decarbonizing more heavy duty applications like trucks, planes, ships, boats, you name it. Anything that requires a very high capacity output typically depends on fuel cells for its decarbonization race. But we also know that the big problem with fuel cell technology is the fact that there is absolutely no infrastructure available out there for most countries and states. And as a result, many fuel cell models from Honda and Toyota are not either selling or actually getting discontinued. But like I've said multiple times over the past year, this infrastructure problem is just a short term bottleneck. This is not a problem with the actual core technology and the value proposition that it provides. This is a problem of not enough investments, not enough incentives, and not enough education around the role of hydrogen fuel cell technology. But what has just happened with a state like California has completely shocked me and makes me believe that this decarbonization race is potentially going to accelerate at a faster pace than I had initially thought. You see, California essentially came out last week and told Nikola Motors, who is obviously currently developing a fuel cell electric truck, that they cannot sell their truck in the state unless it is a part of their incentive program called HVIP. And underneath that incentive program, customers are eligible for an insane $240,000 incentive per truck that they buy. This will cut the cost of the truck by 60 to 70%, which means adoption for this vehicle is going to accelerate regardless of how expensive the core technology is, which means Nikola and other companies that are selling such solutions are going to see massive sales tailwinds over the next few years. And right now, California is saying, we don't want you to sell these trucks in the state unless they're available for that 240K incentive, which essentially means California does not want cost to be a bottleneck for the adoption of these trucks. They want people to be able to buy these trucks regardless of how expensive it might be because they obviously understand that early stage technologies are always expensive at the beginning, especially in an industry as complex as the hydrogen fuel cell space. And since Nikola right now is one of the only companies in the entire country that is developing a mass producible fuel cell truck, they have the upper hand in this incentive structure and they're going to be the test bed in 2023 for how well these trucks will sell, which in my opinion could surprise most investors. And let's be honest, California is really the perfect state to pursue hydrogen in. They've had over $10 billion in federal and state funding to build out infrastructure because they have a massive pollution problem. And they already understand that in the long run, hydrogen fuel cell production and usage is going to be the really the main way for them to decarbonize their entire fleet because they simply have way too many vehicles on the road and a grid that is way too fragile. And we already know that the infrastructure problem is potentially going to be non-existent in California because they have a massive amount of refueling stations available north of 70 as of December 2022. And when it comes to trucks, at least this infrastructure problem is not going to be that big of an issue because obviously trucks are typically refueled in a centralized manner at gas stations. And that obviously reduces the need for an incremental station for each truck that is on the road. And so if you really want to talk about catalyzing the chicken and egg problem that hydrogen technologies face today, this Californian push is the perfect test spend to really resolve that issue. Right now, we have a great amount of innovation taking place in the fuel cell industry in terms of efficiencies, finding new ways to use fuel cells in different applications, and also core technology improvements that can help reduce the capex of these technologies. But the main issue has always been scale, as scale is very important for bringing down costs in the long term. The reason why internal combustion engine cars are cheaper than electric vehicles 
is because there's more internal combustion engine vehicles on the road and more produced every single day than electric vehicles. And the only real way to fix that cost gap is by investing in the right infrastructure and the right production. And right now, California is really leading that charge, even though many people think it is for a complete waste of money because obviously the return in the short term is very low. But this was the same case with electric vehicles in 2010, with the internet in 2000, and with the smartphone in 1990. So just keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about the cost of a technology being a hindrance for not investing in it. In my opinion, California is a perfect example of what it takes to actually push the hydrogen industry forward. It's going to take a lot of investments, a lot of education, and a lot of trial and error to really push this game forward, which is going to have massive carbon reduction gains in the future. And that is exactly why I think this order really is a massive validation for fuel cell technologies. And even though in the short term, yes, it is very expensive to fuel with hydrogen vehicles, and it's probably not going to make a lot of sense for passenger vehicles, for the long haul trucking industry, and even for the grid itself, this is a very good charge. And I think that's going to be a very important thing investors do want to keep in mind, investing in any form of hydrogen supply chain business. And why exactly do I believe that? Well, the simple idea is hydrogen vehicles provide you a one to one replacement in terms of operation ability than an internal combustion engine, gasoline or diesel truck. In a 10 minute time frame for refueling, you get a similar amount of range available from a hydrogen truck as you do with a diesel truck. But with a battery truck, you would get significantly less range. And that obviously does not even account for the fact that the grid has to be significantly more complicated for a battery electric infrastructure than it has for a hydrogen infrastructure. Right now, the main issue with hydrogen is that the infrastructure is not there. But the issue is that in the long term, as the infrastructure comes online, the incremental cost of each new truck that comes onto the road is going to be significantly lower than for an electric vehicle. Because obviously, the more electric vehicles you have on the road and on the grid that are charging, the more power output the grid needs to be able to handle. But with a hydrogen ecosystem that does not require investments in transmission and distribution lines, your infrastructure costs are going to stabilize in the long term. Because producing and storing hydrogen is nothing like storing electricity in a battery, getting a transformer and a high voltage distribution cable to be able to support that power when you have so many other households and commercial businesses already dependent on that same exact transmission line for power and energy. In the case of hydrogen, hydrogen electrolysis can actually act as a load balancer for the grid that is much better than a battery because you can produce hydrogen indefinitely. But with a battery, you can only store a certain amount of energy in that battery until it gets full. And then you need to either replace that battery or discharge that energy in a very short amount of time, typically around eight hours for the battery. With a hydrogen system, you can discharge that energy whenever you want. You can store hydrogen in tanks for days, weeks, months, and then use it when you actually need it, let's say during the winter, when in the summer you produce a lot of electricity, store that in hydrogen, but then in the winter you can use that hydrogen to your own purposes instead of having to waste that energy during the summer, which obviously is going to help reduce your overall carbon footprint, even if the efficiency from each step is lower. And it is abundantly clear that California understands that mechanism. They see that in the long term, hydrogen costs at mass market are going to potentially come below batteries and even below diesel. Because hydrogen is a fuel, it actually has the ability to be cost comparative with diesel because it offers the same usage mechanism that a diesel truck provides. You're still transporting a fuel, you're still storing a fuel in your vehicle, and you're refueling at a gas station or a pump station similar to a diesel truck. And not to mention a lot of big energy companies like Eon, Shell, and even Chevron are investing in hydrogen production, distribution, and fueling infrastructure themselves. And with the cash piles that they have, let's imagine how much money that they can bring into the hydrogen space and how quickly they can reduce the cost once they get the ball rolling, which is exactly why I think right now is a very interesting time to be investing in the hydrogen space. Electric trucks are obviously really good for short haul applications and battery technology is improving, but for the long term, for the sustainability of the grid and for usage patterns, 
Hydrogen fuel cells is probably going to make more sense. And right now, it's all about investing in the right assets at the right time and getting that chicken and egg problem solved, which is something that California is really trying to do. And the rest of the world is just playing catch up on. But as usual, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I know this was a very, very unedited video. So let me know your thoughts on this type of format. And obviously, have a great Christmas and New Year.